called the hole inside the hole inside the house inside the house. <laughs> Into the version of the sky above my house one afternoon when I was 12, the nearby high school released a flood of pink balloons. Maybe 50 head, sh head size shapes allowed to rise and flee inside the light, inside the day, until they landed, popped by heat or puncture, or in time, lost their buoyancy with age. Each balloon had a message tucked in its insides I'd heard. Handwritten dispatch, pinned in private by whoever blew it up. Some touched down on local lawns and in the streets around the school, though most continued further their latex bodies trailing out into the outlying air, becoming anybody's. Gone. One particular balloon I later noticed, having found no others I could claim, became caught in the high branches of a pine over my family's neighbor's yard. Too far to climb to or, or to lob a stick at. No one else seemed to have noticed. I knew at once I needed this as mine, that I had to read the words cribbed inside it. They were for me, words no one else would ever see. All that day, I lay in wait. I watched the balloon above me watch me watch it through binoculars. It seemed somehow even farther off. I held still in fervent patience. I do not remember any birds. I felt no time go by until there was no longer light enough outside to discern the tiny shape among the tree's limbs. Their mass, a dark leaf on muted sky face, pale with diffuse human glow. Even then, I stared into the outline. I had to be made to come inside and leave my secret thing in the unseen. I don't remember anything that night about my sleep or dreaming. The time between the day and day again is void. Most all nights up late alone in homes seem shaped this way, unremembered beyond a gloss that holds the darker, darker hours altogether an edgeless orb. The next morning, the balloon had disappeared, popped against the branch bark, perhaps, or blown off elsewhere what direction. The trees stood smug in morning calm. They knew and would not speak, or any way I did not ask, and found no remnant on the ground beneath them. The surrounding air and dirt went on so far among continually dis diminishing horizons. The words in my balloon remained any words. Sentences hid from me and sent instead into another or to no one. Symbols eaten by the light. What those words inside me could have said, I wonder. Where or what I would have gone or been today having them absorbed. Somehow ending up another person smarter further. This gone forever and still here I am now. Such kind of aimless mental spin, all without answer, is the kind so many nights that keeps me up long after I lay down stuck in inevitable fixation over nothing, pointless thinking. The day again once come and gone and nothing new. Each day past the way that days do. Walls, windows, websites, faces, food. Each repeating in no obvious pattern without pause. This thankless thinking thinks itself and beget in its wake only more frames and frames, doors to nowhere filling the days. What's worse is that I'm certain had I managed somehow to find a way to get that balloon, unveil its letter, I wouldn't now remember it at all. Instead of words that changed my way, they'd be more junk among the whatever. A useless blip in the make of every other hour crammed and clicking by transfixed. Likely I wouldn't even remember the day of the release of the balloons either or all my want about that certain one or how the sky since then seems at once that much for, more flat and deep, so full with all the light and what's, what it sucked up that most nights it appears absent of all stars beyond the biggest framed with human given names. Beneath this shifting veil, like under eyelids, we people keep our own shapeless array, a moving, needing human network without center. 
Each day, the numbers in the cities rise, bodies pushed from bodies in the hours, screaming new blood, our flesh mass rising on the hour despite the other bodies becoming popped or shriveled up with age like the balloon sent nowhere, the masked stars burning out on their own gas. Any of us nowhere, really, ever, among it, except now and here, unless we trust the likewise rising mass of relics of what we've seen and thought and felt and said, days transcribed and shapes and symbols arranged and rearranged, each in small dementia among the same containing air of earth, a continuous, insurmountable revision of what was and is and will be of the dead. And with each hour, more newborn people, babies, more bodies having passed into the soil. Twin tallies rising higher on both sides, each new layer's residue applied by the act of simply passing in time silence under the replication of the image of ourselves, the films and the recordings and the buttons pressed and who, when, where, the shed skin and hair and teeth, the sperm and egg, the seas. Each in our own head, our thoughts surround a me. Each mind the center of a version of a version of the world surrounded, packed in side by side in air and days. Each day, more input, output from each body, the more awake, the more confined, while the volume of the Earth's air remains the same. Each location grown and gorged with psychic fat histories of happenings and gatherings and births and deaths of heads and names and limbs and numbers each in their own way becoming covered over no one or further wrong of what that same year as the balloons as if in morning someday i hit a white box under the ground i've got it in my head maybe from tv to make a time capsule something to hide and so preserve though i hadn't yet begun to think of days as disappearing my selection of what went in was rather rash, selected from the growing archives of crap collected in my closet. I could never bring myself to not hold on to anything a day gave, ticket stubs, postcards, use utensils, notes I wrote to myself inside my sleep. Into the box, I placed an address book full of names and numbers of the people that I knew. I put in a softball sign by all the players of my older cousin's league, all of them strangers. I put in a ream of the dot matrix printer paper covered with error garble which the machine would eject and malfunction sometimes in the night in which I always found myself entranced by. I put in a ring I would bought from a garage sale that would open to expose a little hidden space in which for some reason there was a hunk of resin. There were other things I buried, I'm sure, though I can't remember. I think I thought I'd hide these objects underneath the soil, leave them there for years and years, maybe for a future version of me to dig up, or maybe I imagined I might die and this would be my archive, this crap. But I couldn't wait that long. Maybe four months passed before I went and unearthed the box myself. I found the plastic lid had cracked. Grubs and dirt stunk in the folds of what I'd hidden and there was moisture, the stuff inside had grown a little mold. Instead of joy, the relics had turned nasty. I had to throw the whole thing in the trash except the ring. I think I kept the ring. The one thing not mine, though I can't today remember where it is. So much I can't remember and can't remember to wish what I remembered, and you and yours. And all in all and on and on with each day repeating hours piling up unseen, it only grows. Among this casual, prolonged squashing, we learn to hide inside the sound because we must. Today, while bored looking through websites about torture, my own blank often evoking inert want to see the worst, I notice how many common modern methods used on captives often sound like ours in our cities if reframed. Forced positions, prolonged standing, continuous exposure to bright light or noise, witnessing torture of others, cold exposure, solitary confinement, threats. Each practice by now normalized to seem for the most part simply part of the experience of urban life. It is a feature of our survival via numbing, ignoring, contextualizing, counteracting the silent blitzing by sleeping, eating, drinking, laughing at the jokes. 
that the more minor daily tortures are made common, incorporated, even love, skin of advertisements, entertainment, socializing, awe of money, unique objects, motion, the expectation of the wish of wanting more. With the internet now too, we can at any hour access electronic versions of anything all at once. Speech feeds of the bored or awake or paid or lonely or aspiring or horny or worshipful and more. Database images of explosions and sick and murder alongside the shopping and the family albums and the free games, avatars of family and strangers and friendly fronts of corporations, boundless text and sound and image of what we might have otherwise remain covert and each hour only growing fed by countless bodies pressing buttons at the flat face of millions of machines. Over time and such consumption, the body suffers in aging, thinning, breaking, building calluses or bruise, each angle of which serves to disrupt the quality of sleep, our only temporary exit, and thereby over time emphasizes those distinctions through exhaustion. Our attention feeds through totems towards the whole. The product of prolonged rest in effect operates against the body like torture or dementia, anxiety, depression, fear, lability, introversion, lethargy, fatigue, loss of memory, inability to concentrate, sleep difficulties, nightmares, headaches, visual disturbances, vertigo, paresthesias, sexual disturbances, these ruptures gather in gross packets, one feeding another, causing one's defenses to become null, numb or dull while still aware and opening the flesh to sickness or predator toward death. In the daily gush, the waking hours often may feel, seem to feel more like one's sleeping, and one's sleeping held more shallow, ruined awake. It must come in too through the blood. There's something inherent in our human aspect that feeds the will to make and want and make and want and still need more of the same gush that drives us among others to want something where there is nothing, to want calm where there is noise. Often we become bored when the familiar ways no longer seem to hold some unnamed magic, some unconscious chance it might explode or shapeshift right in our hands, glee of the new, though this is also the kind of repetition that makes us feel comforted, lets us rest. The further waking of the wanting comes on often as a product of itself, a taste of the unknown or glee or terror causing in the body the birth of a receptor that now requires it to be fed or to be buried, lacing the familiar with something slippery and ailing, driving the object, filling out its name and not the other way around. Often as an infant, I would not recognize my mother in the night. She would come to me there in my crib and see me screaming, shaking from her as she stood. She, she'd reach to lift me up and I would cower, a bright terror mirrored in my eyes. Other nights she'd find me walking blank along the hallway, lit unconscious in the living room. I'd stand and shrink, I want my mommy, I want my mommy. I am your mommy, my mom would say, in a younger version of her current voice and yet transfixed inside of nowhere. She was no one to me at all. Other nights I'd wake to find myself having moved inside my sleep to different rooms or upside down or backwards on the mattress or underneath it not knowing what I'd done. Today when I asked my mother about my young sleep terror, she reenacts me walking backwards from her. In the low light, her eyes stretched, stretched wide mimicking mine. My mother in recent years has been getting shorter. Her size sinking back into itself. Seeing her perform the reenactment even now to me seems horrific. The idea is still vivid enough in her. I can almost see who she was then in her eyes. The years have not stuttered her recall. Her skin is paler, her fingers thin, her silver hair reflects all light. Her eyes are just the same. In my asking how I'd been then, in my sleep trouble, she describes the way I'd seen, unable to see her there before me, how I seemed not even to see the house. Terror was real to you, and that was it, she says. Her other self there just inside, the other selves of all of us surrounding all of us, each of us at the center of our own being, each aging in our own frame, sprawling toward into each instant going gone, every minute the most packed minute, the furthest point along the curve. 